What up, what up, what up? We're going to jump into our Africa news, Niger specifically. And I would like to take this opportunity to correct myself from my last video. Um, uh, I was, you know, confusing Nigerians from Nigeria with Nigerians from Niger. Um, earlier, earlier in the stream, someone was nice enough to uh, Niger. Thank you, Niger. Yeah. Um, but someone was nice enough to point out that there is a spelling difference, but apparently it's pronounced the same. So they are Nigerians. <laughs> or Nigerians, I guess. Nigerians, right? Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to correct myself from my previous video. Um, we, and we're actually going to be seeing uh, in, in, this, in this coverage here, uh, Nigeria making comments on Niger. But uh, once again, I would like to point out how ironic and hilarious it is that I'm I'm legitimately afraid to use a country's name because of how badly weaponized the N-word has become. It's Niger. It's Niger. Uh, Al Rakabi is correct. Nigeria's Tin Tin Ubu seeks Senate support for ECOWAS intervention in Niger. Uh, Tinubu is reportedly seeking support to intervene against the ruling military in Niger, where a coup removed the democratically elected government. Um, we got more tunage here. Ni Niger Nigerian, not, Ni not Nigerian. <laughs> Nigerian President Bola Tinubu has written a letter to his country Senate asking its members to back a regional military intervention in neighboring Niger. Wow, he wants to go in with his military. Where a coup toppled the democratically elected government of Mohamed Bazoum last week. Local Daily, the cable, reported on Friday that Tinubu requested for military buildup and deployment of personnel for military intervention to enforce compliance for the military junta in Niger should they remain recalcitrant. <laughs> Uh, I believe that means entrenched, right? I believe that's what incalcitrant means or recalcitrant. <laughs> I think. Let's look this one up. This is a fun word. Recalcitrant. Recalcitrant. Having an ostensibly uncooperative attitude towards authority or discipline. Oh, that's a beautiful word. Recalcitrant. Beautiful word. Regional powerhouse Nigeria currently holds the rotating presidency of the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, which imposed sanctions on Niger and on Sunday gave the Pushtisht a week to restore Bazoom to power or risk possible armed intervention. Ooh, we looked this word up last week. This is another great word. Um, one who takes part in a, in a push, which is a, a revolution. Basically, a person who's like... A, a, like a professional revolution a revolutionist <laughs> uh, yeah a, a, a person believing that a government should be removed by force uh, basically you know a, a terrorist a political terrorist but this is this is a more accurate description um, you know especially especially once that extremist element has become uh, has has obtained power or you know uh, captured power it's more putishist. 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 How do you say this? Putishist. 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 Puch. Oh, that's really loud. Putishist. Okay. A week to restore Bazoom to power or risk possible armed intervention. Ooh. Get some video here. <laughs> So we might see a legitimate swims with whales. Okay, cool. That's a little loud. Turn it down for you here. Really now we're free today. Nobody thought this day would come. At last the people of Niger are free. So I guess she supports the coup. Free to move. The seventh coup since 2020. The seventh since 2020? coup leaders have until august 6th wow so what's the difference why why is this one different than the other ones god damn that was intense 
So that's tomorrow. Yeah, that is tomorrow. What's the difference? What was the difference between all those other coups and this one? Um, sanctions imposed on Niger by the 15-member ECOWAS include border closures and suspension of all financial and commercial ties with the country. The Central Bank of West African States, BCEAO, canceled the planned 30 billion CFA franc bond issue issuance by Niger on Monday. So I think it's a loan of some sort or a bond. ECOWAS was dispatched, uh, had also dispatched a delegation in Niger, headed by former Nigerian leader Abu Dol Salami. Okay, uh, that is Salami. All right, shut the fuck up. That is Salami. All right, everybody, shut the fuck up. This guy's name is Abdullah Salami Abu Akbar. That's his name. His name is Abdullah Salami Abu Akbar. I'm on the recommended list. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. I don't know how the algorithm. I'm so sorry. The algorithm decided to feed you cancer. I apologize, swims with whales. Um, <clears throat> headed by former Nigerian leader. Abdullah Salami Abu Akbar to negotiate with the soldiers who seized power. I bet it's not Abdullah Salami. I bet it's something different, isn't it? But the team left without meeting General. Oh boy. Oh, oh boy. Ab Abdurraham Hamain Abdurrahman to ch to ch 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 the the coup leader. Meanwhile. Tichichiani Tichichiani Chiapet has said he will now he will not bow to pressure to reinstate Bazoom. Of course, he's in power. He's not going to give it up. He denounced the sanctions as illegal and inhumane. That's hilarious. Garbage fuel. <laughs> and urged his countrymen to get ready to defend their nation. Oh, yeah. Okay, buddy. I guess he's got supporters, though. ECOWAS has been struggling to contain a democratic backslide in West Africa in the last two years. This has included military takeovers in member states Mali, Burkina Faso, and Guinea, and an attempted coup in uh, Guinea-Bissau. So maybe that's why we're seeing Nigeria wanting to like get serious with it, because they see, well, if Niger gets taken over, we're next. There's this belt that goes across Africa that I've heard referenced in, in some of the other coverage that we've done. Um, and I guess this is why, this is why it's different. Uh, Ni Nigeria sees it as a legitimate threat. Like they're, they're going to come after us next. Tinubu, who is yet to appoint ministers for defense and foreign affairs, despite sending a list of 80, 48 ministerial nominees to parliament is eager to stamp his authority in a region derided as the coup belt. So that's what I was talking about. The coup belt. And Nigeria, which has the largest armed forces in the region and has previously contributed the most number of troops to other regional peacekeeping missions, is set to lead an intervention force in Niger. So that's why. Okay, that's what makes this different. Western countries have also strongly condemned the July 26 coup. Many of them saw Niger as the last reliable partner in efforts to battle armed groups linked to Al-Qaeda and ISIL. Oh, give it up. Give it up, Uncle Sam. Holy shit, dude. Can the George Bush dream of a fucking terror-free world end, please? You know what would end terrorism? Ending world hunger. That's what would stop religious terrorism. Far more than the barrel of a gun. Several Western nations have also cut aid, even though Niger is one of the poorest countries in the world and relies on outside help for nearly half of its annual budget. Yeah, wow. Shit's a brewing, guys. This could actually get quite serious. Um, this is this is fascinating. What? Who is Max Blumenthal? Who is this guy? Why does he do these things? So here's Max Blumenthal coming out in support of this um, military dictatorship uh, NG, this is water. I know, I know it says this, this used to have red wine in it, salt spring wild red wine, but it's actually just, it's just water. I'm just trying to stay hydrated and I'm trying to save money 
right? So I, just, I reuse containers. I'm very green. This I'm super green. This is not, bro, this is not, what? <laughs> you think this is vodka? You think this is like, what, 10, <laughs> 100 proof? I just drink it. I just drink. <laughs> I just drink straight fucking grain alcohol. I promise you it's water. CGI, it's water. Wine with a lid like that is a bit special. It tasted nasty. My wife and I are drinkers. This was given to us as a uh, housewarming gift. And we had it in the fridge for about a year. We finally cracked it open and we were like, Ugh. <laughs> so, but now we're using the bottle. So mm. I like it because it's got this bad boy. This is my, this is what I like right here. I like these. But no, can we talk about Max Blumenthal? So like the the Russia defense, like defending. Um, oh yeah, well, Patriot, totally. You know, this label is nuts. I put this thing through our dishwasher, which completely obliterates most things. Like it'll, it'll like destroy designs on dishes and stuff. This label barely scathed, man. This label is like, I'm not fucking with this label, dude. It can stay, it's fine. Ah, ooh, yeah, that's water. Ah, I start slurring my words. No, I don't like to drink alcohol and smoke weed. Like it totally ruins my high. If I if I take one little sip of alcohol, it completely ruins my weed high. Um. Anyway, Max Blumenthal. Can we talk about this guy? Um. His he's over here defending Russia. You know, making really gross defense. He was just recently platforming and defending Michael Tracy, basically basically saying Michael Tracy's the only journalist you can trust on January on the topic of January sixth. And look up you know, look up Michael Tracy's January sixth takes. They're atrocious, right? Right wing, you know, in defense of the right wing narrative, trying to make some kind of academic defense for blaming Antifa. Drugs are evil, water is good. Um, yeah, no, vices are bad, NG, you know? Some of us can't be as perfect as you there, bud. Mr. Perfect over there. No vices, right? Free to judge, free to judge the people around you because you yourself are the example we should be setting, right? Um, they're running the world on purpose. They are ruining the world on purpose. I refuse to believe the world is imploding on its own. I mean, Genghis Khan, I mean, what is what is Max Blumenthal's goal? He's not getting paid by the Nigerian warlords to carry water for them, because that's what he's doing here. Uh, Tony Blinken, who was raised by the uh, consul conciliage to the French president, is clearly rankled by Niger's popular anti-colonial revolt Wow, that's a pretty friendly description of a violent military coup uh, and wants, quote unquote, democracy restored at the barrel of a U.S. proxy's gun. Wow, that is a pretty, I mean, I just don't understand what his motivation is, right? He's not getting a check. No, I'm not perfect when I tell you that I never even. Uh... Well, wow, so, so. You've never done any of these things, but you feel comfortable giving advice to other people on how what they should do, huh? So you've never experienced any of that, but you feel comfortable telling people how to act. Does that feel a little silly when you're giving people advice, knowing full well you actually have no idea what you're talking about? Does that feel a little silly when you do that? Um, he wants to be in the next Deus Ex game. Max Blumenthal? Fuck that. That'd be like when Milo Yiannopoulos was in Postal. Like, that was a terrible idea. For good Africa, the United States is going to fall. The whole world... Nah, I... This, this idea, this, this fantasy that, that, uh, capital, late-stage capitalism is on the verge of collapse, and, and, uh, the United States, the dollar is about to, is about to, you know, be upended by some... I don't know, Asian replacement, maybe some Chinese replacement, right? It's going to usurp the dollar. 
Not fucking, it's not fucking happening, man. It's not even close to happening. All right, NG. Okay, sure, bud. I just, I just hope the next time you're giving people advice about things that you've never experienced, you think about what I said about how you actually really don't know what you're talking about. Right? Uh, Clutch Cargo, welcome back. Blumenthal made a career out of rightly opposing U.S. imperialism for so long now. No matter what's going on, he can never see anything else. But I mean, this isn't even like, you know, like, is, is, is the, is, C, is the CIA involved in this in any way? You know, is the, is the West involved in this? You know? All we've made is all we've done is make a statement about how we would like to see, you know, the democratically elected person return to power. D Dangus Khan, are you serious? <laughs> Same problem with the Twitch uh, Marxist Lenists. Uh, very true. Yeah. Uh, anyway, just wanted to point this out. I just don't I don't even I think Max Blumenthal is kind of a nihilist and I think he likes to be a contrarian. And I think he confuses contrarianism with intelligence, maybe, or sounding or looking intelligent. I just, I don't get it because he's very well read. He could, he could probably smoke me in a debate, right? He would just pull out all these facts and all these other things, right? Um, right. Um, but I mean, I just like, I, I don't understand. Like, either, either I'm completely misinformed right and uh, and every news source that i've listened to on the russian ukraine topic on the nigerian topic is lying to me and max blumenthal has the underground right it's like it's like they live right like it's just full saturation right no matter what news source i go to even the ones that pretend to be less biased or even like biased for one side or the other Right, but Max Blumenthal knows the truth. Right? It's like it's either that or Max Blumenthal is like making a career out of being dead fucking wrong and picking picking the worst people, picking the worst sides. Right? You're over here still defend I mean after Bucha, like I get it before Bucha, right? There was like, you know, the anti-NATO stuff. Okay, it was there was a lot of strong arguments against uh, you know against Ukraine and and you know okay let Russia have these things, and then Bucha happened, and it was like, right, uh, how are you still defending, you know like uh, uh, Russia just annihilating Odessa right, and you're over here just making excuses for Putin every single day. I, I don't understand. I don't think he's getting money. I don't think he's getting paid for this. Right? Besides whatever meager donations he can get from the from the weirdos that watch him. Right? I don't think he's getting Kremlin money. I don't think he's getting money from these with the Western war the African warlords. So I don't get it. I don't get why you want to be wrong. Why do you want to be so wrong? Face à l'attitude désinvolte et à la réaction de la France face à l'attitude désinvolte et à la réaction de la France relativement à la situation interne qui prévaut dans notre pays, le Conseil national pour la sauvegarde de la patrie décide de dénoncer les accords de coopération dans le domaine de la sécurité et de la défense de cet État. Le Conseil national pour la sauvegarde de la patrie appelle la population nigérienne à la vigilance et à l'égard des espions et des forces armées étrangères et l'invite à transmettre aux autorités les plus proches toute information relative à l'entrée ou au mouvement d'individus suspects. La CDAO étant impersonnel, toute agression ou tentative d'agression contre yeah. l'État du Niger verra une réponse immédiate et sans préavis yeah. des forces. I don't think Ni I don't think Nigeria is bluffing either. I think they're gonna they're gonna go into Niger 
before it reaches their borders. The defense and the security Nigerian sur un de ses membres, à l'exception des pays amis suspendus. Also, man, man, man muss ja feststellen, dass das im Umfeld Nigerias oh, die, die Wagner, Wagner no way. Und, und andere russische Sicherheitskräfte länger aktiv gewesen sind. Das betrifft Mali, das betrifft Burkina Faso, aber trotzdem liegen uns keine. So that explains why uh, Nigeria is more scared. This is not your average coup. These guys are backed up by the Russian mercenary group Wagner. Maybe some of these guys, you know, fresh fresh off the battle of Bakhmut, right? The like the hottest battle on the planet, right? So you got you got mercenaries coming from, you know, the hottest battle off the planet, right? Against AK-47 dudes wearing sandals. Um yeah, I can see I I'm kind of I'm kind of getting a better view of the picture now. And it seems like it's pretty, pretty, pretty dire. Keine Erkenntnisse darüber vor, dass uh, russische Kräfte bei dem uh, Putsch in Niamey eine Rolle gespielt haben. Aus unserer Sicht ist es weiterhin so, dass um, One more time on that, I blocked that. Putsch in Niamey eine Rolle gespielt no, no, haben. Okay, we have no Sicht, knowledge, what, no knowledge that Russian forces played a role in the coup. Okay. Uh, Putsch in Niamey eine yeah, Rolle gespielt. sandals are cool, but they're not exactly the best battlefield attire. Gespielt haben. Aus unserer Sicht ist es weiterhin so, dass um, der Putsch sich in Teilen der Präsidentengarde Guard. entwickelt ah. hat und dann praktisch äh, zu einem späteren Zeitpunkt sich erst der Rest äh, der, der Streitkräfte angeschlossen hat. Ähm, es schien keinen größeren Plan zu geben. I don't like flip-flops or sandals. Gegen eine, I like my feet to be protected. Längere Vorplanung. Trotzdem sehen wir natürlich, dass like es im Zusammenhang mit dem Putsch einen Anstieg pro russischer Desinformation gegeben hat. Es sind auch einzelne russische Fahnen in Niamey verteilt worden. Oh shit! Ähm, aber ähm, es gilt, glaube ich, auch festzuhalten, dass äh, Russland äh, im UN-Sicherheitsrat die Erklärung mitgetragen hat zur Wiederherstellung der äh, ah, demokratisch okay. gewählten Regierung. Okay, so yeah, so he's saying, well, I would like to point out that Russia did support restoring the democratically elected government in what, when, what, some UN Security Council meeting. Okay. R Russia technically supports uh, peace in Ukraine, guys. You know, fat lot of good that means. Wiederherstellung der demokratisch gewählten Regierung. I don't like that. This guy, this guy is a fucking the the. I swear to God, dude, if he if he told me oxygen was good, I would I would start suffocating, right? Because my body would start rejecting o oxygen. Like, it's just unbelievable the lies that come out of this guy's mouth. I believe nothing. Oh, yeah, very concerned. So that's interesting. Okay, so that's their official stance. Wagner doesn't give a shit about that, though. <clears throat> you know, a couple... You could just have Wagner mercenaries just doing a little moonlighting, and, you know, you would only need, like, five or ten of those guys to be, you know, quite effective. Yeah, they'd a couple white supremacist Wagner guys would be in hog heaven in Niger. Sound like he's in a Discord call with the buddies talking about geopolitics. Oh, look at this. The prisoner. God. Guys, the prisoner. Can we talk about the prisoner? How good is the prisoner, right? If you don't know what The Prisoner is, please watch this TV show. It's so good. Patrick McGuhan, he's so good. It's so good. Okay, we're no longer a politics stream. We're just gonna, well, I'm, now, I'm now XQC and I'm just gonna sit here on Netflix for eight hours straight and just watch movies and TV shows, guys. That's what we're doing. Oh, he turned it off. Oh. All right, we got one more video on Niger.
ECOWAS leaders finalized plan for political military intervention in Niger. So it sounds like it's happening. So this was from four, four hours ago. Uh, so maybe five hours ago, roughly, uh, if that timer is uh, when I first clicked on it. So it looks like it's, it's really happening. Um, and uh, yeah, it looks like, I, you know, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure if Russia is actively doing anything. I mean, clearly Russia isn't doing anything to stop it, um, per se. But I don't know. I don't know if these Wagner elements there are just, like I said, moonlighting or if they were, you know, sent there for regime change purposes. I'm going to need to see more proof before I start making assumptions on that. And then yell and hit the table and fall off the chair or something. The chat will love it. I should, right? Just make a complete fool of myself, make a total mess in my office. You know, I got to clean that shit up when I make a fucking mess to entertain you. You know, I got to clean that shit up. West African defense chiefs say they now have a plan for possible military intervention to reverse last week's coup in Niger, including how and when to deploy forces. Coup leaders were given a one-week deadline to step down and restore <laughs> ousted President Mohamed Bazoum to, you, to yes. power. Military chiefs yes, from the 11 goblin. active ECOWAS Oof. nations came together in Nigeria. The topic of discussion, what to do about the recent coup in Niger. A few days after the junta ousted the elected president Mohamed Batzoum and took power, ECOWAS issued an ultimatum. Either step down by Sunday or potentially face military action. Now the bloc says it has a plan. Uh oh. There is a, a steely determination by uh, our heads of state and government to put an end to it and to make an example of Niger to make sure that never again. It's Are we happening. going to allow uh, you know, the disruption of the region's uh, move towards democratic consolidation in our region? But it was, yeah. it's not going... He said make an example. Dude, it's happening. He said make an example. It's happening, dude. Democratic consolidation in our region. But it was, it's not going to tell the coup plotter when and when, where we are going to strike. This is the first time ECOWAS has threatened military action as a response Ooh, to a coup, girl. and many will see it as a test of the bloc's mettle. We must ensure that decisions taken here today are not mere rhetorics, but are transformed into tangible actions on the ground. It's a show of unity for the cameras. So are some of these countries military dictatorships themselves? Is that what I... Am I getting that right? Man, Africa's a mess, man. <laughs> but a clear divide has emerged. Niger is the fourth ECOWAS country to come under military rule in the last two years I see. after Guinea, Mali, and Burkina Faso. And like those three nations, it has now been suspended from the group. The juntas in Mali and Burkina Faso gave their support to the Niger coup leaders. We hereby warn that any military intervention against Niger is tantamount to a declaration of war against Burkina Faso and Mali. In Niger's capital, Niamey, pro-junta demonstrations continue, and it's not only Nigerians in attendance. The citizens of other ECOWAS countries living in Niger support the new authorities. We live very well here. Fatherland or death, we will win. As the deadline looms, it seems ECOWAS has a long way to go to win the hearts and minds of the people of Niger. Wow. So, I mean, their countries and this alliance is in direct assault from a religious extremist group that has been successfully cooing and taking over governments along you know what they what they've been dubbed what's been dubbed the coup belt and these have all been ECOWAS uh allies that have had to been suspended making the alliance weaker and weaker as as these as these people become more and more successful and we're hearing uh Wagner is is involved this is all very this is all very spicy interesting stuff here Abio Luardeng is an analyst who studies the Sahel region. How crucial are the next hours going to be with that deadline set to run out Sunday? 
The next few hours are incredibly crucial. I think it's very much a point in which we can see which side is willing to call the other side's so-called bluff. It will be interesting to see if Tinubu's threats in terms of military intervention by Nigeria are backed up with fact. I did think that he was leave. so unspecific about where and leave. when they could strike. While that might that might be true, that might mean that they have a good idea of various targets uh, which could be attacked. It also might be a stalling technique uh, to buy time in order to really be sure and assess Nigeria's military capacity in, and also the political will in Nigeria in terms of uh, a military intervention in this, uh, in Niger. When yeah. you say bluff, uh, what, what are you saying? That ECOWAS's plan isn't all that concrete, perhaps? I think that the plan itself might be quite concrete, but I think that the reality of the situation is that uh, we, this is a situation of pure uh, real politique. Each side is talking to multiple members. There's very much the presence of non ECOWAS states involved in this. We, we do know that there's potentially talks going on with Russia, the Wagner Group. We also know that non ECOWAS states such as Chad and also Libya and potentially even some of the, um, the uh, fighting in Sudan. Uh, have uh, people who are uh, interested and perhaps even implicated in this coup d'etat. We also know that both Mali and Burkina Faso have come outright and said, if you attack Niger, you attack us as well. So as a result, Damn. of course, Nigeria... Uh, so they're not only cooing, but they're also in, in a alliance themselves. Like, this isn't just a random group of violent, you know, people. Like, this is... Is this a revolution? Right? Is Max Blumenthal correct? This is some, you know, fight, unification against the corrupt Western alliance or pro-Western uh, corrupt alliance that currently makes up the African governments in this ECOWAS coalition. Which is a country that is currently uh, at the presidency of ECOWAS, uh, has a lot to prove because Nigeria is also not only a regional power, but also candidate for BRICS. So they must show that they're able to handle complex situations within their own region through democratic uh, and regional processes. However, is it so simple for Nigeria to really push for military intervention in Niger? I think it's going to be a lot more difficult. There, there's not necessarily the full support of people in Nigeria and other ECOWAS nations for this inter uh, intervention. And even more difficult if, uh, right. if that's true, that the Wagner Group is now. Uh, they're in Niger and is offering support to the coup leaders. So they could be, there's a, they, there's a very real chance that they could be successful and take Nigeria? Boy, that's, it's, it's pretty interesting stuff what's happening here. Absolutely. There have been some inconsistent uh, reports whether or not they are present, but I think at this point it's pretty clear that there are conversations that are being held at that level, whether via uh, Mali and Burkina Faso, or perhaps even via countries like Algeria or um, and such. So we do know that um, for Russia, uh, demonstrations are definitely a sign of a shifting policy towards uh, towards Russia. Abiyol Ding, an analyst of the Sahel region. Thank you very much Great. for your insights here. So yet again, yet again, follow the cookie crumbs to the, you know, to the villainous shit happening across the world and who's connected to it, Russia. Uh, I wish I wish the United States had more of a moral authority because then I could be like, <laughs> then I could be like, ah, I got you. It's like, ah, well, look at the crimes that the West are committing across the world. Yeah, we're all, they're all up to shit. You're on DW. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So that's very interesting. So we're going to see. I guess I'm going to have to do a follow up maybe tomorrow, uh, maybe later in the week. Uh, but yeah, it looks like we're going to have to follow up on this. Uh, is is Nigeria, you know, lacking real public support, knowing that there's a real threat, but lacking public support, are they just bluffing? And if they're not bluffing, where's the battlefield? Where's this fight going to happen? Are they going to go into Niger? Are they going to wait on the border? Um, who's going to pay for it? How long can they sustain it? What happens when they lose? All these questions, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, very exciting stuff happening here in, in Africa. Um, it's really interesting, this ECOWAS coalition, I never heard about it before, but 
it looks like it's some kind of legitimate attempt to, you know, start some kind of fledgling cooperation and alliance. And here comes Russia potentially supporting a totally destabilizing effort, right, to completely upend this. Um, yeah, no problem, Clutch Cargo. By the way, Clutch Cargo, did you know you're named after a very esoteric and weird cartoon from like the 1950s? Anyway, YouTube, there you go. That's my coverage of Africa and Niger specifically. Like I said, we're going to be following up later in the week. So you can expect the News Underground to cover that. Hey, why don't you uh, tell me how many segments on Niger Hassan has done? Why don't you just let me know? Thanks. Bye. I'm not jealous. Bye.